Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 44, Acts of the Apostles, the 44th book of the Bible. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, speaking to Israel, and Israel, whom I have chosen. And the book of Acts, transition book, begins with God reaching out still to the Jews, with the apostles. Thus saith the Lord that made thee, and formed thee from the womb. So not evolution, God. Which, which will help thee, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jerusalem, whom I cho chosen. God is Israel's helper. And Jerusalem is upright. It's One day Israel will be pure, and they'll be right, and they'll be sinless. They're not there now, but they will be. And right now, while they're not right, just not, God is pleading with them to get right and do right. The Old Testament through the law and today by the Lord Jesus Christ. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, meeting their need, and floods upon the, upon the dry ground to make pools of water. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, the Holy Spirit, and my blessing upon thy offspring. And with these blessings given come it will be going to Israel, and they shall spring up the, the offspring, the, the the seed among the grass as willows by the water courses. So a well defined tree. A tree can't grow in the ground that is dry. It needs water. One shall say, I am the Lord, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. There are going to be people who are going to come of the Jews, they're going to give themselves one of three names, the Lord's, Jacob, or the surname, the name of Israel. Thus saith, okay, now here's another one. I don't pick on these religions. These are people who stand up and come up with doctrine that's against the Bible. And as a man that God has given me with the responsibility to word and ability to, to, to preach and to teach others, I've got to stand to it. I don't care who you are. But if you're wrong, you're wrong. Plain and simple. Thus saith the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the King. Chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Jehovah, the King of Israel. Who did they want to make king? Who's coming back King of kings and Lord of lords? Scripture with scripture. And his Redeemer... The Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, of hosts. Want another clue? Not really completely sure yet. I am the first, and I am the last. Um, you read it before in Revelation, I am Alpha and Omega. And beside me, there is no God. So it's not Jesus, and it's not God. They are one. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will go as God and Jesus, but they're not the same. The Charismatics will go Jesus only. You both got it wrong. It's the Trinity, three and one, and one, you know, one times one times one is three, is one. Three ones, multiplication is still one. But they're three. You can't get into that now. Because I don't know, I understand that. I can't explain the Trinity. But the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega is Jehovah. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's what the Bible says. That's black and white. Plain and simple right there. Isaiah 44, verse 6. And if you don't see that, you're blinded. And who, as I, God, shall call? 
and shalt declare it, and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, and the things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. You know, God is a God of prophecy. He gets it right 100% all the time. Man may get it right outside the Bible. They may get it right outside the Bible. But if you got the word of God, you'll get it completely right. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. For I have, have not I told thee from the time and have declared it. Ye are even my witnesses. Whose witnesses? Go back to verse 6. Israel, hear ye yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Jehovah Witnesses with, with uh, Revelation 144,000 have stolen the name of God's people. Do you think God's really pleased with them? He's going to cast them into the hell that they don't believe in. You know why they don't believe in hell? Because that's where they're going. They don't want it. I will curse them that curse thee. And, and they are cursing the nation of Israel by saying God's all finished with them. And give us the spiritual promises. Give us the physical promises. Let us be your people. And you're not. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Oh, we've been talking about God. We've been talking about Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is not a God, and God is not a God. They're both God. They're both together. <clears throat> now, if Jesus Christ was separate from the Father, then we have trouble. Then, then there'd be two gods. But we don't see that here. They that make engraving. Oh, now we're going to go to graven images. Now we're going to go to the Catholics. And the Egyptians. And all those that make imagery and idolatry. They that make a graven image, and this is so funny, are all of them vanity, nothing. All the people that make a graven images and all the graven images are nothing. And they're delectable, the great, look what I've done things shall not profit now they may make money off it but when it comes to eternity it ain't going to do you nothing and they that are their own witnesses oh, they have their witnesses so you have jehovah witnesses jews and you have witnesses of graven images oh and you see in the paper, you know, to this saint who answered my prayers, and I pray to Mary, and I pray to the Rotary, and I pray to this statue, and I got this statue. They answered my prayers. That's a witness of a graven image. And they are liars. They see not. Imagine that. Someone who says that their statue works, God says, you're blind. Nor know, you have no knowledge, that they may be ashamed. You know what's going to happen to these people that worship these graven images? They're going to stand before the God, Revelation 20, at the, at the great white throne judgment. And they're going to realize that God ain't James. God ain't Buddha. God ain't whatever you got for a statue. When they, they had the statue at Dagon in the Old Testament... And they brought the ark and that, that boy hit the ground twice. And the second time he was cut in pieces. And they picked him back up. And you're going to see something really stupid when we read this chapter here about these idols and idolatry. If you had to pick your God up, what kind of God is he? He's a handicapped God. He's a God that, that, needs, that needs one of those pedals. Help me, I'm falling, I can't get up. I don't want that God. When Elijah is making fun of the, the Baalites in uh, Mount Carmel, come cry aloud. Maybe he can't hear you. Maybe he's too busy. I don't want a God that's too busy that can't hear me. I don't want a God that travels away and then can't hear you.
be ashamed. I wouldn't want to be ashamed to find out that my God didn't work. Who has formed a God? Small g. Or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing. You know, our saying is good for nothing. Like I said, you may make money. But when it comes to your eternal soul, it ain't going to do you no good. It's not believe on this wooden image and thou shalt be saved. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I've got Jesus here. No, that's not. That's a graven image. That's not what Jesus Christ looks like. Now, we have an idea from the Bible, but we don't know what he looks like. It would be funny if the image of Jesus that is passed around in the paintings and the, the crucifixes, it would be funny if that, that, that someone, because you've got to use someone's face in order to make something like that. Like I said before, the Statue of Liberty, the guy who made that, the, the face is the face of his mother. It would be funny if the, the guy that uses his face was a murderer or something like that. Behold, all his fellows. Now, the fellows is everyone that's going to be in, involved with this graven image. And we're going, to, we're going to read a couple of trades in here. All his fellows shall be ashamed. So everyone that is involved with making and worshiping these graven images are going to be made ashamed. You know what Romans 10 says? If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with your heart, and with the mouth confessions made to salvation, you won't be ashamed. Worship idols and images and all that, you will be made ashamed. You know, I think it's a shame to have a cross. I'm kind of a little bit maybe hyper in some of my ways, but cursed be he that hangs on a tree. I mean, the old rugged cross, I'll cherish the old rugged cross. No, I cherish the Lord Jesus Christ. That old rugged cross was an instrument that added more pain and sorrow. Why don't you put nails up on a the wall? These are the nails of Jesus. I mean, you make fun of, of the of the shrines in the Roman Catholic Church, and the Baptists had their own shrine. So, they are of men. That's not a God. All men. Since Genesis 3, all have sinned and come to shore the glory of God. So that's where you're going to base your religion upon, a man that's a sinner. There is none righteous, no, not one. That is the foundation of your religion and of your idol worship, a sinner. My foundation is Lord Jesus Christ, according to Paul in Corinthians. That foundation no other man is laid, but that is Jesus Christ. Whereupon I build gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stone. That's not idolatry. It's just material. Let them all be gathered together. Get them together. Let them stand up. Yet they shall fear. And they shall be ashamed together. They're going to stand before God one day. Imagine, you know, just going by that verse right there, imagine God calling up this idol. All right, everyone that made this idol and worship, stand up, step forward. Cashes that thing into, into the lake of fire. Is he going to burn up or is going to melt? If it, it is wood or uh, metal. Now what do you guys got? Those, those Philistines, you know what they had with, with Dagon? They had a broken God. You know what the Baalites had at Mount Carmel? They had an unanswerable God. So stand up. Yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. For, uh, excuse me, the smith with the tongue both worketh in the coals and fashion it with hammers. Now, if you ever, this is Romans 125. If you ever seen a blacksmith work, Horseshoeing, or do you've ever been to a place where they show you what life was back in, in the colonial day? Now, this is what we're looking at here. This is a guy who would be working in a blacksmith shop. There is nothing wrong with a blacksmith shop. I mean, he, he makes uh, shoes for horses, he makes hooks to hang things on, he makes metal products that you need. 
But we're not talking about that. We're talking about a graven image to worship. So, with hammer, he worketh it with the strength of his arms. And he's got strength in his arms. Muscle. So he is working in the metal. And it doesn't say he's using the metal for the the God, but he could be. He could be making metal and all that to make the God that's going to be a God. But he's involved. The smith is involved. Yea, he is hungry. And his strength faileth. He drinketh no water and is faint. He's got to get the job done. He's depriving himself. He's fasting for this God. He has a Lent. Forty days of giving up something for his God. See, it's in the Bible. Next guy, the carpenter. That's a guy who works with wood. Stretches out his rule, his tape ruler, his measuring rod. He meet, he marks it out with a line. He fitted it with planes, that's lines across the, 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 the piece of material. And he marks it out with the compass, that's around, that makes round holes. He makes it after the figure of man, uh-oh. According to the beauty of man, that it may remain in the house. It ain't going to go nowhere. It ain't going to walk around. Matthew 24, 15, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. He heweth him down cedar. Nice smelling tree. And taketh the cypress and the oak. Oak is very important in the Bible. Man, that tree shows up with death. Idolatry. Which he strengthened him for himself among the trees of the forest. He strengthened him. He takes care of it. He planteth an ash, and the rain does nourish it. He plants these trees. Then shall it be for a man to burn. Cut the tree down, you burn it. For he will take thereof and warm himself. All right, it gets too cold. You take a log and you put it in a fire to be warm. Nothing new? Anything? Anything really spectacular? No. Yea, he kindleth it. And bake his bread. All right, so he gets hot. I mean, he gets cold. He needs warmth. He, he takes the wood. He burns it. He's hungry. He makes bread. He puts wood in the stove, starts a fire, and from the heat, bread. Yeah, he maketh a god and worship it. He maketh a graven image and falls down there too. So we have fire for heat. Fire for bread, and we have a God from the same piece of wood. Now, if that piece of wood was God. Why would God allow you to take Himself, the God, and let you burn Him for heat? Why would you take a God and cut Him up and be able to put Him in your oven to, to feed you? And then what's ever left over, you make a God. A God that you threw into the fire. Part of. He burned part thereof in the fire. Now if I was a God, and you're about to chop me up and burn me, I wouldn't allow you to do that if I was a God. I'm not. With part thereof, he eateth flesh. He roasteth me. And satisfied. First old. Yea, he warmeth himself. A fireplace. And saith, Ha ha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the residue, whatever left over, thereof he maketh a god. Even his graven image, he falleth down unto it. And worshipeth. And prays unto it and says, Deliver me, for thou art my God. Deliver me, 
I just took part of you through you in a fire so I can cook and get warm, and you're going to deliver me? How about Jeremiah and his tree? You go out in the woods and you chop it down, you carry it into your house, you set it up, you put gold and silver on it, and you bow down to get put water in it, you bow down to get your gift from it, and then later on you throw it out in the, in the, in the street for the garbage man to come and either burn it or chop it up. That's a God? That is a God that you're going to say, deliver me, Mr. God, deliver me, Lord, thou art my God. People don't think. These people that, well, they, they get the, these images and these idolatrous junk and, and stuff like that. Oh, I got this, I got this gold Jesus. Well, what did the other gold that came, and listen, and that, that gold didn't come out, uh, here, here's a cross with Jesus on, out of the mountain. No, there was other gold pieces. Of it. What else was made from gold along with that Jesus that day? Well, I got this brazen God. Well, you got this brazen God, but they could have made a brazen bedpan too that day. Is that a God? I got this totem pole. They found these totem poles all over North America. One half of that totem pole could have been a canoe. And the other half could have been the fire. A part of it could have been a peace pipe. And these are the gods? All the stuff that they they found in Pharaoh's resting places. All the stuff that Mr. Pharaoh King, God, you know, they were king, God kings. And he's laying in a museum somewhere with all his junk everywhere all around the world. That's the God that the Egyptians turned to? That allowed people to come into his tomb and steal? You mean Mr. Pharaoh, King God, did not protect his house? You mean the wood allowed you to, to chop it and put it in a fire? That's your God? God said, yay, there is no God. I know not any, and you go and build all this mess, this junk. They have not known, there's no knowledge, nor understood, there's no understanding. For he has shut their eyes. God has shut their eyes. Because that's what they want. They want this false God. They want this small G-O-D. They don't want God, so God's okay, fine. You know, the, you know the sorry thing is that what God will do to you? God will allow you to do what you want to do. That is the free will of man. God will offer himself... And if you don't want God, you can have whatever you want. Why are there a billion churches around us? Why are there billions of religions? Why are there cults? Because that's what man wants. They don't want God. It's, it's spoken in the, uh, in the Old Testament. That there was a perverse and lying spirit that God said, go ahead. Go do your work. God wouldn't do that. Yes, he would. You know what Mary says in Luke 1 or 2? She says, many, some of but she, just, she says that people will call me blessed. So you know what they take that verse today? They'll say, the blessed Virgin Mary. Mary was right. But I got the blessed hope. The Lord Jesus Christ, Titus 2.13. You want Mary? Go for it. God will give you Mary. Mary ain't going to do nothing for you. You want Dagon? God showed them. Hey, your God's fallen down twice. He's cut up in pieces. He's a loser God. Is that what you want? Send the ark, away. Send the ark of God away and let us set Dagon back up and keep on worshiping him. He has shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You better not turn away from God, 
And you better not turn away from God with, with gods. Because he made to say, okay, go ahead. Trust in that. That they cannot understand. That's a sorry thing. And none considers in his heart. Because there's no understanding. Neither is there any knowledge or understanding to say, I have burned part of it in the fire. Yea, also I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Wait a minute. I burned that thing. I ate with that thing. I got warm with that. I'm going to make the rest of it a God. That, that's an abomination what the Bible says. He's speaking to Jews. He's not speaking to Gentiles. What's it say, verse 1? Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. You guys have been making idols. You are called. I am the king. I am Lord. I will help you. Call out to me. I'm reaching out to you. And then you know what? Your smiths and your carpenters have been making idols. And you've been cooking with them. And you've been warming yourself with them. And it's an abomination. One day the Jews are going to acknowledge that graven images are abomination. And I fall down to the stock, that's the tree, piece of the wood, of a tree. Matthew 24, 15. And Jeremiah speaks about that. He feedeth on the ashes. A deceived heart has turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul nor say is there not a lie in my right hand that idolatry the second command thou shalt not is the only command that the curse goes on to the children because if you're a Roman Catholic Your great great grandparents worship that idol. Your great great grandparents worship Mary. Your great grandparents worship the, the, the idolatry. Your grandparents worship the, the statue. Your parents worship the statue. And you will worship those statues. And your children will worship those statues. And if someone comes in with a Bible and is a Bible believer, born again Christian, will show you what, and they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as a. a not Nicodemus, uh, Cornelius did, and change. But if not, you don't want to believe the gospel, you don't want to believe the Bible, you will stick and your children will grow unless they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the idolatry worship. And it will not deliver your soul. Many people will be cast in the lake of fire thinking that their piece of wood, whether Roman Catholic, whether Indian, whether... Uh, Japanese, whoever you are, even if you're in the deepest, darkest jungles of uh, Africa, you're thinking that your little whatever it is, whatever name it is, that you made is going to save your soul. You're going to find out it's not so. Satan appears as anything you want him to be. You got to get that. Remember these, O Jacob. Now, I've been said to the Roman Catholic Church. I can apply that. But, doctrinally, the passage has been to Israel. Jacob. Listen. The land is going to be taken over by, by Babylon because of this idolatry. They got more shrines and idolatry on every street corner than we got churches here in Daytona Beach. They even got it in the temple. Get my eyes back here real quick. It's cloudy. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel. For thou art my servant. See, God hasn't given them up as a nation, as an, indiv as an individual. They're involved in sin. 
Those will die and go into hell, but as a nation, as a corporate body, your mind, I'm reaching out to you. Will you get right? Will you realize that's a stupid, idiotic piece of wood? It's an abomination. Turn to me. Come back to me, God is saying. I have formed thee. Like you made that, that idolatry image. You made that. You're a sinner. But I made you, and I'm holy. I'm the holy one. I'm the creator. You're not the creator. I am. I have formed thee. Thou art my servant, O Israel. You're supposed to serve me, not those stupid idols. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. How's that verse? God's all through with Israel. Then he violated Isaiah 44, verse 21. In their idolatry. He said, Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. In their idolatry. That's broken number two of the top ten. There were still people in Israel living right like Isaiah. And there were people involved in, in the idolatry. He's telling those that live right, stay right. Those who are doing wrong, repent and get right. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression. It hasn't happened yet. And as a cloud thy sins return unto me. For I have redeemed thee. Acts 3.19 He bought them. He paid for them. The blood of the lamb over the door. Pass overnight. The killing of the, of the Egyptian army. He paid for the Jews. <laughs> Sing, O ye heavens. Plural form. For the Lord has done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Abraham's was in hell. I know it's hell. But Abraham's bosom. Now, this is yet prophecy. Abraham's bosom is empty today. But well, these are people who are in hell. The graves. Break forth into singing. Ye mountains, O forests, and every tree therein, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Psalms 148.5. I can't read that other reference. Psalms 148, 5 to 13, and 105, verse 6. One day God is going to completely wipe the sins away. He's going to wash them. He's going to make them clean. He's going to give them his spirit. He's going to renew them. And then all the world's going to sing out. All that there is. The millennium. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer. And he that formed thee from the womb... Not you making the idol, God forming you, the womb. So what if what if you do abort a baby from the womb? That's a life according to the Bible. I am the Lord that maketh all things, the Creator, Genesis one, that stretches forth the heavens alone, Genesis one, and spreadeth aboard the earth by her myself, Genesis one. You took this little piece of tree. And you made a God. You made a God. Me, God, I made the tree that you just made a God out of. Isn't that stupid? You made a God out of something that God made. And you're going to worship it as God. The, fur, the frustration, the tokens of the liars. John 8, 44. And make his diviners mad. Ooh. That turn wise men backwards. And make his knowledge foolish. God frustrates the liars. The diviners. I with my cards and my Ouija board and my crystal balls and my potions. <laughs> God make his mad. 
Wise men. God makes them go backwards. They're backsliders. And the knowledge that they have, stupidity, foolishness. You ever read what Proverbs says about the fool? The confer the, that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his of his messenger that saith to Jerusalem I wonder if there's any city in America named Jerusalem but we got a Rome thou shalt be inhabited Jerusalem you're going to be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, ye shall be built. Go over there right now, you'll see it's not. And I will raise up the decayed places thereof. Go over there now. Only thing they got, as far as I know, and heard, is the Wailing Wall. That's it. As far as all the walls of Jerusalem, as far as I know, I've never been there, never studied one wall, and that's the Wailing Wall. But prophecy says that that place is going to be built back up. That saith to the deep, be dry, and I will dry up thy rivers. Now it's interesting, before we close this chapter, and this is going to happen in the millennium, but this is going to happen another a time before the millennium, before the, before the, uh, the tribulation period where the temple will be built. They have not gone into captivity, captivity yet. Captivity. They're going to Babylon. But they haven't gone to Babylon yet. They have not. The, the, the Judah and Jerusalem has not been destroyed yet. But we just read a prophecy that they will be inhabited. It will be built. It will be revised. That saith of Cyrus you're looking at Nehemiah in Isaiah 44 along with the tribulation in the millennium a hundred and fifty years before this guy is born he is pre-named he is my shepherd What did God just say? Ezra 1 3, 2 Chronicles 16 22. He shall perform all my pleasure. Does he? You better believe he does. Even saying to Jerusalem, Really, he says to Jerusalem. He says it to Nehemiah, Thou shalt be built, and to the temple, Ezra, thy foundation shall be laid. Isaiah is making a prophecy 150 years before the guy is born. The city has not been even, even touched by Babylon yet. They're still living their wickedness. Nebuchadnezzar not even thought of yet. And God reaches all over all that. Says, you have your little piece of wood, God. But I'm telling you right now, guess what? This city is going to be rebuilt. The, the, the foundation is going to be laid for the temple. And people looking at Isaiah like, you moron. The temple's right there. The wall's right here. Look, I'm leaning against it. Yeah? Wait to the third time when Nebuchadnezzar comes in with Babylon. See what you're going to be leaning against. And it says, the inhabitants thereof are going to... The only thing that Babylon leaves is a few people just to vine dress and take care of the land. That's it. Everybody else, they carry to Babylon. They don't keep the kings. They don't keep the princes. They don't keep... They bring them to Babylon. And we reach all over that time, and we reach, hey, it's going to be rebuilt. Now, then Isaiah looked like a fool unto Ezra and Nehemiah. 
we jump to the end of Second Chronicles. We jump to Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, can you imagine one day Ezra and Nehemiah? All right, let's break out Isaiah 44. That's where I know it was Isaiah 44. But they break out the Isaiah scroll and they read that says, "Sir, I wonder if they knew this." Now, Dyrus is also mentioned, and it's reported in history that they went to Dyrus and say, hey, see, there's your name. <laughs> I wonder if anybody went up to Cyrus and say, hey, look at this, check this out in Isaiah, King Cyrus, here's your name. Let's see if I can read the note here I got, my opinion. Uh... This is a side note here, 1 Kings 13, 1, where jo Josiah was mentioned by name 300 years before his birth. You know what happened? Josiah was born. Cyrus was born. And they both did exactly what they're supposed to, 100% prophecy. Go ask your piece of smoldering, black charcoal, smoking God. If he can have prophecy. And the Bible says there is no God. I know not any. And to, to finish the chapter. I'm going to tell you a prophecy is going to happen many, 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 many years later. And you guys are now you're going to understand it in Isaiah's time. Even Isaiah didn't see this happen. That's the powerfulness of our God. What is the power? What is it to say you got a God? What is it? Somebody say, what makes your God right? What makes your Bible right over my God, over my word, whatever I have? 100% prophecy. 48 prophecies of the Lord Jesus Christ in his first advent, all 100%. So the Bible says he's coming back. He's coming back on a white horse. He's got many crowns. He's got a banner of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And there's going to be the army following him and all that. And he's got eyes of red. He's got a sword coming out of his mouth. And he's going to burn up. And he's going to divide the, the sheep nations and the goat nations. And the sheep nations, he's going to bring in the millennium. The goat nations, he's going to burn in fire. He's going to sit on, on David's throne in Jerusalem when the temple's going to be there. And they're going to enter in one way and go out the other way. You're not going to go back uh, the way you came in. And there's going to be joy and peace. And the lion's going to lay with the the bear and everything like that, and uh, they're going to plant tomato plants, and they're going to tomato plants, right? Tomato plants are going to grow up, and I'm going to be able to pick the tomatoes right then and there as I'm putting them in the ground. You better believe that's going to happen because 48 prophecies that Jesus Christ did, Jesus Christ did 100%. Cyrus will be born. He's going to rebuild the temple. He's going to rebuild the, the city, and it's done. Josiah was born, and he was prophesied, and he was born, and he did exactly what... Everything God is of God of prophecy, 100%. If he's 99% like like ivory soap, then he's not a God. <clears throat> now, you want to pick up your, I got to hear a quarter. And George Washington, I think, is on this court. Mr. Washington, tell me something. Mr. Washington. Mr. Washington, will you tell me something? You can't tell me squat. No, George Washington was a fine man as far as I understand like that, but all have sinned come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one, for the wages of sin is death. He's in the tomb. He's dead. He's buried. His body's beyond eaten by worms. He can't do nothing for me. But I have a God that's living, has always been, ever will be, the Alpha and the Omega, the I in the beginning and the last, forever and ever. He has no beginning and he has no last. That's my God. That's the difference. Religions make uh, pilgrimages to their dead followers. They're dead. The, the guy couldn't keep himself alive. 400 people plus recorded to say that they saw Jesus Christ, the resurrected Christ. 11 of them, at least, saw him go into the clouds and to be seated at the right hand of the Father. I could bring that in the courtroom, and those witnesses will stand up. The judge will have to say, you're right.
That's the difference between religion and God in the Bible.